Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name's Nick Smith. Uh, it says software engineer because I do lots of different jobs at Marmley. Um, I've been here for a while now. I've probably met some of you at a few events, I think. Um, I've basically done all kinds of different things within the SDK, so I've worked on the platform loader side for iPhone, Android, Windows, before that Symbian, I've done a bit of work on some middleware, I've done some customer facing stuff. So at the moment I'm more doing kind of user facing things, so you'll probably see me at some events, uh, on the forums, on blogs and things like that. And also if anyone's doing Marmalade middleware or trying to integrate stuff into the product, then you might end up talking to me about doing that. What I'm going to do this morning is basically a bit of an overview of Marmalade and like what's in the product. So I was going to ask a quick question of basically who here has actually developed an app with Marmalade and got something built on a device, on a store, put your hands up. Okay, this is good for my talk, because basically, if you've done a lot with Marmalade, you might find this a bit dull. Um, I'm going to go through basically what's in the product, what you can do with it, how we allow people to bring in third-party stuff, um, and what that kind of gives you as an overall thing. Um, one other thing I'm going to say is I'm not really good with PowerPoint, as you saw at the start of the presentation. Um, I have built a diabolical PowerPoint slide to start this off with. Um, <coughs> I basically decided, why don't I show you the entire product in one slide? Um, and this may have been a mistake, but I'm going to roll with it. So basically, what is Marmalade? And it's very cool. Marmalade is basically a platform abstraction layer. It lets you write your code once in C++, uh, build a single binary, and push that out to lots of devices. So devices we support are basically BlackBerry, Playbook, and BlackBerry 10, iOS, Android, uh, desktops now, so that's Mac and PC with uh, Marmalade 6.1, and also smart TVs, and then you'll see later on the day we're doing lots of new stuff in the next kind of six months, so you'll see more platforms coming out. Um, and then on top of that, we've got this thing, Marmalade Studio. So Marmalade Studio is basically C++ middleware. Uh, we started off as a games company, essentially doing sort of things like you know, Lara Croft and Final Fantasy way before uh, you know, iPhone and things were big, so we were trying to get complex stuff onto low-end and interesting devices. So we built this tech as kind of uh, games, games tech to use. Um, the important thing though is we have support for some core bits which are C++ libraries, OpenGLES, uh, and POSIX. So when we decided to turn Marmalade into a product, what we did was basically decide, well, we'll make it as standards-based and open as possible so people can just put stuff on top of it. So we have things like engines like Cocos and Shiva, Scoreloop, online stuff like Photon, physics engines, you can do scripting engines if you can get a C++ plugin. So, as Marley was when it first launched, this is basically the product, a, a platform that allows you to write once, put in as much as you want from other third parties, and use that to build an app that will run on all of those devices. What we then did is we built extensions. So, this I think was in Marmalade 5, maybe? Um, and what that lets you do is write down to the system level so you can extend our abstraction layer. So you can do things like pull in a game center on iPhone or uh, the Google Play Store to do billing and that sort of thing. Um, and then you can write some middleware around that to wrap it up and make it easy to use for you know, the users. So from a user's point of view of Marmalade, you're still doing C++ coding. You don't have to use a Mac. You don't have to use the iPhone tool changer to install third-party SDKs. You've still got this nice, simple C++ interface. But if you want to extend it to do more things, you can. And then the other thing we built was native UI. So this is basically a write once, run on all the platforms, pull up like the actual native iPhone tab bars and scroll views and things like that, or Android and so on. Um, that's on uh, iPhone, Android, and desktop at the moment. Um, we've got plans to push that out to more platforms. And then the last big thing we did in 6.1 was web marmalade. So apologies for the slides, this is going to get more complicated as it goes. Uh, what Web Marmalade basically did was give you two versions of Marmalade. You can do C, which we basically targeted at games with all our existing tech, and then Web Marmalade for HTML5, CSS, JavaScript. So build web apps straight on top of Marmalade, push them out to devices. You don't have to worry about you know, how you set those up, how you get access to JavaScript engine. That's all done through Web Marmalade for you, and that sits on top of our extension library itself. Um, and the main bit of Web Marmalade is it gives you phone gap APIs, so you can take existing phone gap code and just run it straight on top of Marmalade. Um, and then obviously other kind of JavaScript libraries like jQuery. And then the big thing we're doing with 6.1 is basically to sort of remove that. So rather than having like two different SDKs essentially, one for web and one for native tech, we're giving you access to calls straight between the C++ and JavaScript worlds. So going forward, Marmalade 6.1 is a sort of a truly native uh, and web hybrid environment for building any kind of app you want. So hopefully that was uh, 
not too confusing or complex for everyone. Um, just give you kind of an idea of basically what's in the toolkit, what you get out of the box. I'm going to run through those components really quickly and just kind of say how they work a little bit because I think one thing we don't really do very much in our documentation or when we introduce people to the product is really say, you know, well, how, how is this achieved? What is it actually that is allowing us to have this single high speed native binary running on all these platforms? So, the core bit of Marmaid is this Marmaid system layer. Um, it's a pure C platform abstraction layer, gives you access to things like accelerometer, uh, GL rendering, files, memory, <coughs> all the kind of basic things you'd expect, and then some higher end things like camera access, access to native file pickers, and so on. We have a build system called MKB that ties everything together. Uh, so that's like configure, build, deploy, and so on. The basic thing is we bundle the GCC toolchain so that everything is compiled with this one toolchain, whether you're using a Mac or a PC, whether you're targeting device X or Y, you're building this one single binary. Uh, we support ARM x86 and MIPS on a few platforms now, um, with plugins for Visual Studio and Xcode. So the kind of important thing to think is, you're not building an Xcode or a Visual Studio project. You're not going, I'm using such and such SDK for Visual Studio, and Marmalade is my plugin at the end I'm pushing out to. What you're doing is you're using our MKB project system to build a Marmalade project, build a single binary, and then we let you plug into things like uh, the IDEs or the uh, debugger simulator on desktop to, to leverage those things. But basically what you're building is this single binary at the end. And then we have a deploy tool which basically takes uh, your single binary and a little bit of loader code, which is a per platform piece of code, um, and patches them together. So uh, there's one of these for each platform. It implements the extraction layer, basically. So things like you know, when you ask for some memory to be uh, allocated, it does that through whatever the system is going to be using. When you ask for uh, the camera to stream some data, it does that through whatever the system is doing. There's also some quite clever stuff in there, basically, to um, make sure that <coughs> the same thing runs on all the platforms and it does it as fast as possible. So it's not like a, a virtual machine or some thing where you're waiting for some call to come back from the system. We basically <coughs> design it to compile down to a small and fast bit of code as we can. Uh, and typically the loaders are very small, they're like a few hundred K at most, and they're actually doing a very small amount of the calls. Because you're building like, say, an ARM binary, basically most of your code is just your compiled application code. And we're just taking away the pain of doing the, you know, the implementing for iPhone, implementing for Android part, and making sure we handle things like call interrupts and how to work with the system, how to free up resources. So basically, you shouldn't have to worry about that at all. Uh, the tool set, um, so this is basically what we're saying. You've got an MKB project. We push it through SCONS as a, um, the command line uh, tool chain, basically. Uh, you have an ID, so Visual Studio or Xcode. That gets pushed through to like, your compiler, like GCC, for example, to build that binary. Um, and then we've got a desktop simulator, so uh, the ID you can push straight into that, and you can debug through that. Um, or your app binary, you can think of it as kind of a, a, pro a package that you've built up that you can then deploy to any platform or you can run in the simulator or whatever you want to do. And then the deploy tool basically just takes your loader, packages that with binary, and gives you an app. So this is basically where the platform abstraction works. It's pretty much as simple as that. Um, to show you kind of what's, what might be in an app, uh, you've got your device at the bottom there. It's got some graphics drivers. So this has typically been GLES. Um, and we then wrap up the GLES stuff to make sure it's actually a standard rather than you know, a theoretical standard. Um, but going forward, we're looking more at things like DirectX drivers, things like desktop and Windows Phone, um, and providing a GLES input to those so you don't have to switch to a different kind of rendering context. Uh, the stuff on top, we provide C and C++ standard libraries, and that, where possible, wraps our abstraction layer, so you don't have to use our proprietary APIs if you don't want to for most things. And then all those things in the middle there are sort of examples of third-party things you might put in. Um, the important thing to notice is basically the black box is your app binary. So all of that stuff will compile in. Um, it will be optimized for the compile away stuff you're not using. So it's not like we're packaging things into a black box uh, system that you're having to call through to. We're trying where possible to allow you to compile that stuff into your app, do what you want with it, and then provide this kind of thin layer at the bottom just to take, take the cross-platform pain away. Uh, a quick bit about the studio components. So these have been there for quite a while, but, but sort of point them out. We have some graphics library stuff. So GX is a sort of a, a rendering layer that does um, GLES 1 and 2 and some software rendering abstraction. Then on top of that, things for resource management, automatic texture compression to cope with different GPUs, um, mm -hmm. 3D model rendering. We have some tools on PC for plugging that into uh, 3D Max 
Axe and Maya and so on, um, and then some utility APIs and so on. Uh, and then the other thing I thought I might pull up would be UI. So we started off as a games company doing making games and then making uh, software to let other people make games, and more and more we're moving into doing apps. So you've got different ways you might want to approach that depending on the different components of Marmage you want to use. So the sort of simple one is IWUI, which is part of our studio middleware. It does um, cross-platform C++, text file input as well, style sheets for doing uh, style configuration. This basically gives you a nice, simple cross-platform UI that will work on anything. Then we've got uh, native UI, so this is our um, code one to use the native UI option. This is kind of useful for popping up occasional bits in your program you want like views to pop up to ask for user input. Um, or if you want to do a kind of simple pared down iOS Android app. And then Web Marmaid, which is going to give you like full web view, HTML rendering. Um, and what you can do is basically use all these together. So you can do a kind of a truly hybrid app with bits of C native rendering, and then with GLES in, and then use Web Marmaid to do forms and things like that. Uh, what I'm going to talk about later on, if uh, if, you, if you want to sit through that session, it's going to be long and possibly boring, possibly interesting, is a bit on extensions and how to extend Marmalade. So if anyone is interested basically in you know, writing some middleware for Marmalade or uh, exposing more of the, you know, particular platform's native capabilities, then what you want to look at is extensions. So extensions basically, as I said, are uh, extension to the Marmalade system. So it's basically letting you write part of our actual loader product yourself. And then if you want, you can put some C++ plus middleware in there to you know, give a nice user interface across those. Uh, and then also people today are going to be talking about probably native UI a little bit and web marmalade quite a lot. So just to kind of show you how these work, you've basically got um, some extensions that they run on and then some middleware that runs them. Uh, and what they give you in your application code is the ability to write C++ UI code or some HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, and I think Samantha and Andrew maybe are going to be doing some demos of the web bridge and uh, how to use JavaScript and CSS within your app. So that's me done. That's the entire of the product in about 10 minutes or whatever that was. Um, if anyone's got any specific questions, feel free to fire away now or we're going to go into these bits in more detail during the day. So anything you want to know anything, then go for it. We've got time for questions now, so no problem. Yep. Can I, uh, is there something to stream video, is that uh, something that's in there? Yeah, so the, um, the standard loaders for all different platforms have um, an S3 camera and a camera capture API. So the camera capture one uses the native UI of the device to pop up some kind of view for you know, just like filming video or taking images. Um, and the camera API plugs straight into the native streaming API. So you can stream to the screen or to buffers and do you want with that? So there's some uh, like augmented reality examples in the SDK you play around with. When you say desktop, does it include Windows 8? So it will do. So at the moment we're doing, in Synchrom 1, we're doing uh, Windows 7 compatibility for like Windows and full screen and setting up you know, the kind of things you want with Windows um, and also some work to improve graphics drivers. So we'll be running GL on top of DirectX and that sort of thing. Um, that will probably just run on Windows 8. But uh, we will be doing work to, to, to improve that for you know, retro integration and that kind of thing further down the road. Yeah? Question? Probably get to this, but how far away is 6 1 from the Middle East? Uh, Leicester? It's, it's uh, very, very imminent, basically. I'm not sure what the exact release date is now. Because in the next few weeks, um, <coughs> yes. Tony is around, it's about two weeks away. And you'll have a demo of 6 1. Um, something, or just before lunch.